Today we're going to take a look at waves and how we can relate the wavelength and frequency of a wave of electromagnetic radiation. So a wave looks something like what's pictured in the center of the screen. There are a couple of characteristics of a wave. One of them is wavelength, which is given the Greek symbol lambda. Um, and essentially what wavelength is, is it's the distance from one peak to another peak of the wave. So as depicted here, um, it typically has some type of length or distance units such as meters. Uh, maybe it's some derivative of that like nanometers um, or really any length unit, but the most typical you'll see are meters and nanometers. Another characteristic of waves is Greek symbol nu, which looks kind of like a V, and that's called frequency. And that is how many waves can pass through a given point in space in one second. So it's really the number of waves per second. Since number of waves doesn't have a unit, it would just be per second or one over second or seconds to the minus one power. Or they even gave a special symbol to represent that, which is Hertz HZ. Those would be units of frequency. So let's think about how wavelength and frequency would relate to each other. If I were to shorten the wavelength of this given wave, like so, then I would be able to fit more waves in a given space or more waves per second if they're traveling in space. So essentially, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency and vice versa. So wavelength and frequency are gonna be inversely related. They're also going to be related to the speed of light in the sense that if I multiply wavelength and frequency, they equal a constant, which is the speed of light. We give the symbol C to the speed of light and we can look up its value in our reference sheet. The value is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. If I look at how the equation is, to be equal to the same constant, if wavelength goes up, frequency goes down, and vice versa. This equation is also showing the inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. Now what does frequency or wavelength have to do with the type of wave or the type of electromagnetic radiation? If you look at the whole electromagnetic spectrum below, you are going to see that depending on the frequency and wavelength, it will change what type of wave you have. So you can see wavelength at the top. Okay, really long wavelengths would be radio waves. Okay, a little bit shorter than that would be microwaves. A little bit shorter than that would be infrared region. Then there's the visible region, which is a very small, small region of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. A little smaller than that would be ultraviolet. And then x-rays and then gamma rays. Instead of tracking the wavelength here, I could look up the frequency instead, which you'll see has the inverse relationship to wavelength. At really large wavelengths, I have smaller frequencies. Um, and a smaller frequency would have uh, radio waves and then microwaves, infrared, so on and so forth. You'll also notice that the visible spectrum goes from 400 to 750 nanometers in wavelength. So a lot of times if we want to look up what color or light something is, we'll find the wavelength and convert it into nanometers. So the wavelength and frequency in the visible range will change what color of light we see. And in ranges that we can't see, it will change what type of electromagnetic radiation it's categorized as. So now let's look at how to, if given the wavelength, find, find the frequency or vice versa. So I said that frequency and wavelength are, are um, related to each other with this equation here. The wavelength, which is lambda, times the frequency equals c, which is the speed of light. The speed of light is something that you can look up in your formula sheet. That's 3.00 times 10 to the eighth and the units are meters per second. That's a value that you will always know. So now if I give you one of the other variables, let's say wavelength, you can find the frequency um, because there'll only be one unknown in this equation. What's important to note about this equation is that C 
is in units of meters per second. So in order to use that C, I need to make sure that the wavelength is recorded in meters and that the frequency is in recorded in one over seconds or hertz. So that when I multiply those two units together, I get meters over seconds, which matches the units of C. So you might have a conversion that you have to do before plugging into this equation. Likewise, you might have a conversion after you plug into the equation if the question asks for units other than what you solve for. So let's look at an example and practice. Let's look at example four at the top. A visible light wave has a frequency of 7.5 times 10 to the 14th, uh, one over seconds, which is the same as seconds to the minus one or hertz. Find the wavelength in nanometers and determine the color of the light. So I give you the frequency, you need to find the wavelength. So I'm using that equation that I just circled on the side where the frequency equals, excuse me, where <laughs> the wavelength times the frequency gives me C, the speed of light. When I'm plugging into this equation, I know C, I can look it up. I know it's in meters per second. I know the frequency that's given in the problem statement and I can solve for the lambda. You can do this one of two ways. You can either rearrange the equation to start with so that I'm solving for lambda, the wavelength. And to do that, I would divide both sides by frequency. And I get that lambda equals C over the frequency. And now I can plug in. Or I could have plugged in with units to start with and then rearranged it. Your choice. So if I look up C, it's 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. I highly recommend plugging in with units. And the frequency that's given in the problem is 7.5 times 10 to the 14th, one over seconds. When you plug in with units, you will see how they cancel. Seconds will cancel with seconds, and I'm gonna be left with the unit of meters. So if I plug in my calculator, three times 10 to the eighth divided by 7.15 times 10 to the 14th, I should get 4.00 times 10 to the negative seventh, and my unit being meters that I'm left with. As a note, when you're plugging this in your calculator, make sure that you are either putting parentheses around that entire denominator to make sure that you're dividing by both 7.5 times 10 to the 14th. Or it can be helpful to plug in in your calculator with that e function. So you would be typing it as 7.5e to the 14, where you can get that e if you have a TI-84 or 83, you can press the second and comma button, and then you don't have to worry about um, your parentheses. Okay, now that I have my answer in meters, you should probably go back and just check what they asked for in the problem. They don't ask me for meters, they ask me for nanometers. Why do you think they asked me for nanometers? Well, if I go and add to the rest of the problem, it says determine the color of the light. And if I go back to my spectrum, I do see that we are really looking at nanometers for light color. Okay, so I just have a conversion to do, and I wanna look up the conversion to go from meters to nanometers. To go from meters to nanometers, there are 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. So to set this up, all I'm doing is I can show it with dimensional analysis if you prefer. I have meters in my conversion factor. I need meters on the bottom, I need nanometers on top. Okay, there's one times 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. And when I multiply this out, I get that my answer is 400 nanometers. I can then go down to the bottom and I see, oh, 400 nanometers, that's violet. Or maybe you say purple light. So notice when I was plugging into the equation, lambda times um, nu or wavelength times frequency equals speed of light, I made sure that I was getting units of meters and then I did a conversion because I have to go by what the units of C are. So I definitely recommend plugging with units. Let's look at one more example.
Let's look at question number five here. One of the lights produced when hydrogen is energized has a wavelength of 410.5 nanometers. What is the frequency of this light? I have wavelength, I know speed of light, so I can solve for frequency. The only thing is, I said if using that equation, you need to make sure your frequency, uh, your, excuse me, your, your wavelength is in meters. Because if you're using C, having units of meters per second, to get that unit, lambda must be in meters. So I have a conversion to do before I start. I've got to take that 410.5 nanometers and convert that out into meters. Okay, I want nanometers on bottom to cancel. I want meters on top to be left. There's 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. Or maybe you know it as there's 10 to the negative ninth meters in one nanometer. Either which way, I end up getting that this is the same as 4.105 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Now I can plug into that equation on the side that I have. I know my, my wavelength. It's in meters, perfect. I know C, it's three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. I can solve for nu, the frequency. Feel free to re rearrange this equation right away to solve for your frequency. Oops, to solve for frequency, I would need to divide both sides by lambda or wavelength. So all I'm doing is the speed of light divided by lambda or, free, or wavelength. So three times 10 to the eighth, meters per second. I now have my wavelength that I put into meters, and that's going to go on the bottom. In your calculator, make sure that if you were not using that E function, that you were putting parentheses around that entire denominator, so that this way your calculator is doing the correct order of operations. And when I do that, I get 7.30 times 10 to the 14. And if I look at what my units are, meters cancel out. I'm left with one over seconds, which is the same thing as seconds to the minus one or even Hertz HZ. So I can easily convert between wavelength and frequency, and it makes sense that they're inversely proportional when I think about what those characteristics really mean in terms of the wave. The most important thing to keep in mind is that to plug into that equation, if C is in units of meters per second, I need to make sure that my wavelength is in meters and my frequency is in um, second, one over seconds or hertz. You might have a conversion to do before plugging in as in this problem, or you might have a conversion to do after plugging in as in the first.